Hi, everybody. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for joining us. It is a preparation day. What does that mean, Eli? It is the preparation day for the Shabbat. Right. Okay. And so it's a preparation day for the Shabbat. I'm trying to get everyone into the microphone so that everybody can hear you. Um, so what does that mean, a preparation day for the Shabbat, Caden? That means tomorrow you do no cooking, you do no working. So you do all of that today. You cook everything that you're going to eat tomorrow so that you are not killing fire, that you are not working, that you are focusing on Yahuwah tomorrow. You do everything that you need to do today. If you need to mow your yard, do it today so you're not sitting there worrying about it tomorrow. Great. Yes, I'm getting the echo into the microphone so the microphone sounds really good. All right, Jade, tell us a little more about the Shabbat. Uh, the Shabbat day is a day of rest. It's a day you're supposed to just celebrate with Yahuwah. He made it for us to rest. We need one day a week to rest, so that's the day he gave us. We are, not, we are commanded not to make fire. We are commanded not to do any work, not to buy or sell. No employee, no servant or, m or maidservant, no donkey or animal work for us. We do no work. Well, but you feed animals. But you, we can feed animals, right, because we can eat. But we, we should have all that prepared the day before. Okay, so how does this day look for us? What do we do today, Eli? Um, we wake up, usually feed our cows and our chickens, and we just watch How do them. we prepare for tomorrow? Oh, oh, uh, oh we have our crock pot meals. Uh, we cut a bunch of grass for our cows. Yeah, we cut all the grass on preparation day. Yeah, they, so. we, we get big piles of grass because they eat big piles of grass. We get big green piles of grass for them the day before, a few loads of that, and so that we don't have to cut it. So all we do is just give it to them over the fence. Right. Okay, so thank you guys. I appreciate your input on this, and... Um, I would like to, I, I need to reiterate yesterday's story that I talked about with the, the lightning strikes that we had here. And I, I would like to explain to folks that in the country that we live in and where we live presently, it is, we have two seasons. We have dry and we have wet. And I, I explained that yesterday. But one thing I didn't explain is that pretty much half the year, we have lightning strikes all over the place. Like you won't look out without seeing lightning flashing somewhere or thunder going somewhere. It is half the year is completely rainy. And so having lightning and thunder is absolutely nothing, nothing new. We get it all the time. We get loud thunder all the time. We get all sorts of stuff. And you can look out and sometimes you can look in right as soon as uh, the night is here or sometimes early in the morning, like three or four in the morning. And you can just see flashes of light. It looks like things are just lighting up all over the place. We are in a very electrical part of the world. And this is how things are. What was different is that yesterday or the day before yesterday, um, when this lightning came, the, we don't normally have the lightning right over our heads. And it wasn't just over our heads of this nature. It was all around us, and I have never seen a, an electrical storm such as this. From where I was sitting, I was trying to remember this because it was so wild. I, I when it first started, I was like, "Wow, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty intense." But I didn't start counting it. But I recall that at least I saw seven or eight lightning strikes right directly around our house. It was from one side of the house. It was literally right on top of us, and so it was. And it was pounding down. To the effect we could not, you could not hear anything. It was so loud and it was, it was, it was a dangerous, very dangerous thing. And when we said the prayer, Caden and I were praying and immediately after the prayer, it, without a shadow of a doubt, it stopped. It literally stopped like the rain. It just started like a little trinkle and it went from hardcore out of like almost a supernatural event to where it stopped and it was the power of prayer that we we saw some some amazing stuff go and so um you know it's i don't i know it was a miracle i know it was an answer to yah's prayer i just wanted folks to understand that we know what lightning is and we live with it we live with lightning and thunder it's just it's around us for six months of the year so it it um it's nothing new except last the two nights ago that was completely new uh, where it sits right over the top of us and we have we're just it's lightning coming down I mean, it's almost like the devil was trying to take us out and I don't know what would have happened had we not prayed Our prayer. I mean it, it was getting really it was super close to our house It was just all around us. So it is a supernatural event and um, I will always give all glory to Yah because um, he is he is he saves, you know and obviously I don't know how 
the prayer went down. I don't know if our messengers went and sent it up to Yah and our messengers, you know, I, I believe we have messengers all around us. I don't know if that is the, the prayers of the, of the Kadeshian ones um, that immediately went up there and it was, it was almost instantaneous, right? As soon as we stopped the prayer, Okay, do you have anything to follow up on that? Um, no, you pretty much explained everything uh, correctly. You explained everything as it was. Okay, yeah. So that is um, that is yet more prayer. So now, before we get into this, um, we have another story that we would like to explain because it actually deals with the scriptures we are reading today, which is kind of crazy. Um, I don't know if we should do it after that we read the story. Or yeah, we should probably there, read it after, probably so after. there's more context to it. Okay, so there's more context. So let's begin. Let's get into our handy-dandy split screen. Before that, anybody want to attempt to represent with the first Ten Commandments? You're representing for Boss Clan. Um, if you don't do it, I guess you get a big old boo-boo prize for the day. I'm going to run it again. Okay, this is this is simple enough, right? I mean, if you read Genesis, it, it, the first things are. This is, We're going down the list. So what do we got? Be fruitful. Okay. Multiply. Okay. Plenish the earth. Got it. Uh, I can't remember if it's to do it or have dominion first. Well, it's kind of the same. It's the same thing. I think it's. It's four. Okay. Eli, don't cheat. No I cheating here. No cheating, Cookie. Get out of here. More like working together. We're not no, working I, together. It's subdue. I think it's subdue it. It's subdue it, and that and leads have to dominion, have dominion, dominion over, over the fish, fowl, and every living yeah, thing. Have dominion. What else? Okay, so I'll give you that one. Commandment four. Commandment five. Uh, it's almost this. It's almost the same thing. Man and woman should clean no. it. No, I don't and know. Have to, it's have dominion, right? Yeah, have dominion. So, commandment four: is subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, fowl, and this is all within commandment four, right? <laughs> commandment five is have dominion over all living creatures. So I don't know. These almost seem like they're the same thing. Oh, one says, one says fish and like fowls, and one says like other things. Yeah, and Elohim blessed them, and Elohim said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish your earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So I don't know. That might actually be like all one commandment. Now that I'm actually looking at this. Um, maybe we should go back through this. Maybe we're only at 51 commandments. So subdue it. Yeah, subdue it. I, th I think this would be it. So do it have dominion over it? Well, it's the same thing. It's yeah. it's the same. We're in the same verse. It's Genesis 128. All right, so I think we need to clean this up. I think we need to clean up the commandments. All right, anyway, we got the boo-boo. work in progress. Yeah, it is a work in progress. All right, we got the boo-boo prize um, for the day, and we will do the handy-dandy split screen. And we are in Leviticus 10. Okay, now, um, yeah, this we actually have a pretty funny story, so if you guys want to uh, continue on, and a big greeting out there to everybody in our family, um, we'd like to thank you guys for spending time, taking your time out of the day to listen into our ramblings and to the, the word of Yah, which is the most important thing that we could ever find, that we could ever have, that we could ever embrace, you know, and, and I was talking to somebody the other day, you know, somebody was like, uh, we get tons and tons of people that are like, ah, oh, the law's on the cross, and I, give me some, give me some adjectives to describe Yah's laws. Uh, perfect. Perfect. Holy. Holy. Okay. Good. Let's go around the table. Righteous. Righteous. Eli. Um. Good. Yeah. I'm saying wonderful in mine. Kate. Kate. Truth. Truth. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. Eli's um um um. That's not it. That's not a word I'm looking for. Um. I just did it again. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, anyone else have anything? It is it is something that is it is a wonderful light to guide. It's a guide, right? It is a Lifestyle. guide. Blessings. Blessings. Nicole says, yeah. There's I every adjective of everything wonderful would be used for this, and people have forsaken this, and instead of them embracing this with um, joy. They embrace it with, ah, it's bondage. Nobody can keep the law of God. That's just, nobody can keep that, Jason. No, you can't do sacrifices. I mean, I hear that. I don't know how many thousands of times I've heard that. So anyway, let's get into it. And I believe the word of God is good for all generations, for all people, for every family, for every walk of tribe, for every, everybody. It has something, a little something for everybody. And it's how we are supposed to walk to our creator. It's the path back to our creator. And it's an amazing thing that our creator has given us a path back to him. We're merely 
created entities, right? Does everyone agree with me here? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. I need to speak up a little bit more, Eli. We're created entities, right? Okay. Yep. Right? Yes, so sir. why would our creator, why would he leave us the breadcrumbs back to him? I mean, that is, that is what I find extremely amazing is that he not only went through all this trouble here in Mount Zionai and in the, with the Yashrael back in the day, but he's still with us today. You awake, Caden? Mm -hmm. All right. Just, everybody's falling asleep on me today. It must be a long week. All right. So let's read. Let me begin. But it, it's a great thing. All right. And Nadav and Avahu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense therein and offered strange fire before Yahuwah, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from Yahuwah and devoured them. And they died before Yahuwah. Then Moshe said unto El Aaron, This is that, this is that Yahuwah spoke, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Okay, what happened here, folks? So these, these two sons of Aaron were supposed to be the priests, and they decided they were going to... Oh, they were the priests. Yeah. They weren't supposed to. They were the priests. They, they were supposed to be the priests, but they died here, but... Uh, they they brought in, a, they sacrificed something that was they were told not to do. They mixed something on it, like they put incense or something on it that Yahuwah did not like, and basically it got them punished because they disobeyed what Yahuwah had said. So he smote them. He yeah, killed he, them. He, he, the fire ate them. The fire ate them. All right. So I think this is a good time that we can break into our little story here about evil Eric. And let me let me preface this by saying that you know he didn't always be evil Eric. We 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 didn't always label him this, but. Um, after a while, when people do enormous evil after a time, you don't really have a, a name. And so if you want a name that fits people, it would be Evil Eric. Now, Evil Eric had a little table and Evil Eric was selling stuff. So evil Eric was selling pork and selling all this kind of stuff. And we were just getting, this was like eight years ago. We were just getting into the Torah. We had just figured out that, hey, this Torah was for us. And then we discovered all these people, you know, what we discovered with, with Evil Eric is that Evil Eric would bait us because we were keeping Torah. We went to the same place. We used to hand out Bibles at the same place. We used to hand out Bibles. And so we had a little booth next to Evil Eric. And Evil Eric was the ultimate Christian, right? If you're looking for a ultimate Christian, he's the guy, right? He is grace, 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 grace. Uh, all food has been made cling. Uh, Peter's dream had to do with everybody eating their own food. And, and you know, everybody that, that is from this channel should absolutely know that is not true. That all food has not been made cling. But he, he ridiculed us, right? And this guy stands about five foot two. And we're, we, 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 I don't know if this is like what they call short man syndrome or something. But this guy had a bone to pick with all of us. And um, he never stopped. And in the evil Eric, it, I, he was on my WhatsApp for a long time. And um, at one point, because we were keeping the laws of God, he had measured up. Um, it was 6.66 grams of pig fat and, and sent us the 666 with a little, um, with a pig fat on a scale. And he, he said, thinking of you when he did it. And then he sent us pictures of him boiling this pig fat down and it was going into all of his food. And so this guy, even though the, the food was not supposed to have pig in it, he was still using all this pig fat in every thing he did. And so we used to buy his food back in the day and then we immediately stopped. And it was this same evil Eric that as we're doing the Torah, we realized that evil Eric was extremely unclean, right? Because of his kitchen and because of his, his actions and that he not only just, not only was he selling pork and fixing it and, and it, doing it, you know, taking all his grease, but um, he, did, this is where Caden freaked out one time. And this was literally eight years ago. This, he was uh, like 11, 12, yeah, 11, 12 years old. So evil Eric was chasing him around, trying to get him to shake his hand. And Cade was freaking out. And uh, he literally told Eric, I, "I'm not shaking your hand." What do you tell him? And he's like, "I'm like, he's like, he's trying to shake my hand. I'm like, I'm not shaking your hand. I'm, I'll be unclean." He goes, "Why do you say I'm unclean?" I'm like, "Cause you sit there and you touch pork. You boil the pork, man." Yeah. And he was he was offended. He was extremely offended. Yeah. So this goes into this this story now. So he and his son, evil Eric, and his son. I don't know if his son's evil, but it definitely evil Eric is. So they decided they were going to make this this salsa, and they called it Strange Fire, and. Um, 
they did it in like memory of us, basically to like mess with us because they knew we were in the tour and they knew we were because we did talk about Strange Fire a few days before to a few people and he was in on the conversation that we were talking to on the booth. So, so they went and they made a salsa called Strange Fire and they were offering up Strange Fire and they were laughing about it. They thought it was all funny. Now we come there one day. And both he and his son are all up in bandages. There's bandages all over. His eyebrows are gone. His hair is like all ripped up. It's like all his it. hands are of like his yeah, skin, skin is yeah. like falling off his hands. <laughs> it's like, and then we're like, he's like, oh, he looks terrible. Like he's like completely like he had like got out of the hospital or something. He looked like awful, like a train wreck. Yeah, they both did. He both he and his son came up and they had band aids all over their face, all over their hands. Their hands were falling off. Everything was going crazy. So. I guess I don't know what the joke was, but go ahead. Uh, the way he said what happened was that he uh, lit the pilot light because it's one of those ones you have to light by hand. In this country, you have those ones you, like you have to light by hand. You have to put the lighter in the bottom of the stove and light it by hand. Blew up the whole and kitchen. It, and it like <laughs> yeah, like complete like like a fire came out and took them both, knocked them to the it ground. It didn't kill them, but it singed all their hair off, and they they looked like they had just been wrecked. And we were like, "Whoa!" He offered up strange fire to Yah, and he almost died. Yeah. And we're, we were, you well, know, the we thing didn't was know. with the strange fire was they kept trying to get us to eat. Like, here, take a small taste of strange fire. Yeah, take a small taste. And we're like, "We're not eating your strange fire." Like that was the most satanic thing you guys do. And then they decided later they were gonna come up with a thing called the Devil's Hot Sauce, or they had a oh, yeah. they had a second one called the Devil's Hot Sauce. Really, really demonic activity from the evil Eric. That's why he got, became evil Eric. And yeah, yeah it's like hey, every time we saw him, they're like, "Here, try this." They were like almost offering money to us at one point to try. It's like, "We'll give you a dollar." if you eat this hot sauce just a lick of it and we're like no guys just just leave us alone and before we were into Toro this guy's food was really we thought the food was really super good um, and we used to buy his brownies and things from him all the time I mean he was a, he was a good cook but then we found out he was just a satanic demon and um, you know it, it was crazy he almost died because of the strange fire you know this this could have definitely consumed him I mean his like his skin was falling off his hands it burned him so bad so we didn't know what to say but anyway that's the far, that's the story let's get back into this now don't offer strange fire don't to yah. offer strange fire to yah it's not a joke none of this is a joke and um, it's a very serious business right yah is not going to be mocked like this and <laughs> evil error got owned all right and moshe called michel and elia safan what you're gonna say uh, uh michel and el, el, safan. el safan yes the sons of uziel the uncle of eron and said unto them come near carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp okay so there's just a a piece of burned up corpse or something right there right like, hey i don't want to take this one outside the camp you gotta go deal with this yeah and so they they made the uncle the uncle of aaron aaron's like 85 at this point well it's the uncle is the kids of aaron it says the sons of uziel so uziel. i don't even yeah so, so it's like uncle uh, of aaron. the uncle of aaron so it's like something close to aaron's age i think it could it could be it could be the same yeah, it age be. yeah um it's just a brother right so it could be it could even be younger so i think right it's gotta be is it possible he'd be young Aaron's right. uncle? That would be his dad's brother, right? His dad's brother. Right, okay. It could, yeah, it could be. Okay, all right. So so it's not going to be the same age, though. It's his dad's brother, so it's going to be, like, older. Right, much older. So we know. All right. Uh, so they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moshe had said. And Moshe said unto El Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar, his sons, Uncover not your heads. Neither rent your, rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Yashrael, be well the burning which Yahuwah has kindled. Okay, so this is very interesting, right? So Aaron, as a dad, essentially this, was, this is how it'd be. If I was Aaron and you guys were doing your holy sacrifice, all of a sudden I just lost both of my kids. And you guys are, you guys are dead. They did. And he, you cannot wail for them, right? That is part of, that's like part of the punishment. People need to wail, and he said, you know, be sad, be wail the burning which Yahoo has kindled, right? Beware, you know, it's like, um, don't cry for the dead. They obviously screwed up badly that, you know, Aaron was unable to even mourn for them. All right, seven. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, lest ye die, for the anointing oil of Yahuwah is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moshe. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Aaron, saying, 
Do not drink wine nor strong drink, you nor your sons with you, when ye go into the tabernacle of the assembly, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. So this is the first time Yahuwah directly speaks to Aaron without Moses. This is like the first time he speaks to him, and it's like an important thing, like, don't go drinking before you get in here. Plus, that gives us a clue as to why both his kids were smoted. They right? might have been a little... Uh, Sauced up. Probably. Yeah. And so they were probably drinking a little bit. So this goes into a lot of this stuff. Um, people smoke and people drink and people do all sorts of crazy stuff. And there's like uh, like the Mormons, they're like uh, part of the words of wisdom is you can't drink caffeine, which you shouldn't, um, which is probably a good idea. And you can't drink um, booze, any kind of alcohol or stuff like that. Is there a Torah commandment that says we should not be drinking? It does not. It, it, it only says don't be a drunkard. What is a drunkard, Eli? It is someone who is like, who can't stop. Who can't stop. They, they just like have, they drink tons of it and there's no moderation. There's no moderation. And so the story in the Torah where the, the drunkard's kids are killed, these are not, I don't think this were like eight-year-old kids. This I is think they're adults. Yeah, you know, when they Ed, said, uh, my son's a drunkard, he doesn't listen. I mean, he was old enough to be able to drink. I don't think they were just giving their young kids some, here's some wine, son. Right. And so is there any, is there anything wrong with drinking, I don't see no, wrong with um, a, a drink or two is probably fine. A drink I, or two, win. When uh, Paul said, "When your stomach hurts," he's like, "If your stomach hurts, drink some wine." And Yehoshua, Yehoshua drank it at the party, right? He made wine at the at the festival. He didn't say he drank it. Well, he drank it at uh, the uh, last uh, Passover. 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 Man, he drank it. He drank some at Passover. This will be the last uh, last I drink and eat until I uh, see the rain of my father. So we have we have some of our brothers and sisters out there that have drinking problems. There is it is drinking. How would you know you're to the point? How would you know this is, is wrong? It's ruining your life. It ruins your relationship with Yah. It basically takes you off that narrow path to where you're committing great evil because of your, the drinking habit you had. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's understanding it. So what we're saying, I guess, is I guess not what we're saying. What the Torah is saying is that if you're doing this, I, I guess if you're doing this, with the glory of Yah, I guess would be the thing that you would be doing. You need to be, you need to be there. If you're out there every single night, you're cracking mass amounts of beer. Um, how is that a problem for your family? If you're not, how, how is this even a problem? Well, one takes, you might take your attention out of the family or something bad could happen to them. It's really bad for your health. Extremely terrible for your health if you're drinking consistently. That is, that is very true. Absolutely true. Yeah, so as, as far as your temple building, as far as being holy in all that we do and keeping our minds sober, um, we should not be, uh, you know, pounding down mass alcohol. But if you, like, what, what are you saying? Like once a week? I don't know. That's something up to them. They have to decide what their moderation is. And you can't just we can't just say, "Hey, this is what you should drink." We don't have a command of what you can and what you can't drink, uh, how much you can drink. It's something in moderation. If it's taking off, if it's taking your mind off your who, if it's ruining your life and your family's lives, then it's time to probably put down the bottle. Yeah, there and there, there's you know the alcohol comes with a lot of a tremendous amount of demons. I mean, it, it is tremendous amount. And there, that's one thing that people should probably consider is that when you are, I don't know what's the best way, drunk, I guess, looped, loopy, um, you're, you're open. You're open for demonic attacks. You are open for that kind of stuff. Your guard is down. The guard that you would normally have up that we fight, we're fighting unclean spirits all the time, that would be down and it is possible to become possessed and, and have unclean spirits dwell in you. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not good. I would, I guess my recommendation, I would, I would tell people you shouldn't be drinking. I mean, if you're drinking for, um, and that's, again, that's not Torah base. That's just from life's experience and seeing where alcohol takes people. I've never seen a very successful alcoholic. Uh, that monkey on your back is just, it's, it's a horrible thing to shake and it's, it's hard. And, um, you know, caffeine was hard enough to kick let alone, you know, an alcohol dependency or any other kind of dependency. So our, our bodies are, are strong, but they can become very weak very quickly. And Noah, Noah, when he got drunk, I mean, he ended up cursing an entire generation because he got drunk and his kid, like, came in and everything. Yeah, his kid got uh, kind of wacky, wacky doodle. I mean, there's something that went down with Noah's whole whole thing on that. I mean, we don't know. It doesn't exactly ex say. It doesn't exactly Most, say. One of the times we hear in the Bible where someone actually did get drunk and someone, like, and some crazy things were happening, so. So. Yeah, and I mean, that was, uh, you know, Noah didn't seem like he got, I mean, other than j killing off an entire generation or cursing, the, it wasn't even his kid, it was his, his grandkid. 
Um, and we ended up with cursed. Nimrod out of that line. So. Yeah, Nimrod. The whole evil came out of that whole line and everything. So, yeah, it, it's it's probably not a good thing to be doing. All right. On a consistent basis. Yeah. Okay. But like Paul says, if you have stomach aches or something of the sort, I mean, wine was definitely made for, for something, you know, celebrations. If, you know, we're drinking a little tiny glass of it and we're not just, you know, falling down on the ground or something. <laughs> so, all right, 10. And that ye may put put difference between holy and unholy, between uncling and cling. So he's talking about right here. This is what he's talking about right here, right? About drinks, right? right. And about making the difference between holy and unholy. Right, like the, between the priests and the people. The people can drink, but the priests cannot. And un, uncling and cling, right? And it didn't say the priests cannot drink. It says they do not drink when you go into the tabernacle of the assembly. Which leads to believe that Aaron's kids were pretty much probably sloshed. Probably. Probably probably a little off the rocker. I mean, and, you it know. wouldn't make sense if he just said this command out of nowhere. So. And, you know, I think because Aaron was unable to weep for him, I believe Aaron had something to do with it. Like, he knew his kids were a little bit out of control, or he knew. I mean, how would he, if he's the head priest, how would he not know his kids were a little sloshed? Oh, yeah. It's obvious when you're, when you're drinking. He probably wasn't able to correct them at a young age or something, so... It's yeah. like uh, Eli the priest when his kids were out doing crazy sins and yeah. taking bribes and things, and he ended up getting cursed for the whole thing, and the yep. Ark of the Covenant was taken away. So. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. All right, so 11. And that ye may teach the children of Yashrael all the statutes which Yahuwah has spoken unto them by the hand of Moshe. And Moshe spoke unto El Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithimar, his sons that were left, take the oblation that remains of the offerings of Yahuwah made by fire. And eat it without leaven beside the altar, for it is most holy. And you shall eat it in the holy place, because it is your due and your son's due of the sacrifices of Yahuwah made by fire, for I for so I am commanded. And the waved breast and the heave shoulder shall ye eat in a clean place, you and your sons and your daughters with you, for they may they be your due and your sons' due, which are given out of the sacrifices of peace offerings of the children of Yashrael. The heaved shoulder and the waved breast shall they bring with the offerings made by fire of the fat to wave it for a wave offering before Yahuwah. And it shall be yours and your sons with you by a statute as Yahuwah has commanded. And Moshe diligently sought the goat of the sin offering and behold, it was burnt. And he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, which were left alive, saying, Wherefore have ye not eaten the sin offering in the holy place, seeing it is most holy? And Elohim has given it to you to bear the iniquity of the assembly, to make the atonement for them before Yahuwah. Okay, I think this is worthy of discussion right here. Um, gentlemen, you guys following along with me? Yeah. Yep. Okay, this was interesting, right? So, um, who got in trouble here? Uh, the two El other El sons. So Eleazar and Ithamar just got owned. Um, okay, so it's, okay, I'm struggling, because I thought he Phineas was his son. Is Phineas his grandson? Aaron's grandson? Uh, it might be. Because I, I, I remember Phineas, he was the son of Aaron. I, 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 I had only four sons here. It might be the grandson. It might be the grandson. Okay. okay. So anyway, they were told to eat it. So this was interesting that they are, that eating the sacrifice is bearing the iniquity of the assembly. I thought that was very interesting, right? Right. It's kind of like Yahushua, how he bore arson when he died. Yeah. And so there's more to this whole sacrifice thing and them eating this when they ate it. It's all, It's like a ceremony of some sorts like yes i will do it i will eat it and and so i think it's worth noting that there's more to these sacrifices probably than we actually understand all right um and so they they, they screwed up they, they they burnt they burned it all the way up to like basically a burnt offering instead of actually eating it right and so who yelled at them moses moses because he came in looking for it. he's like where's the food why is there nobody eating where is the people eating yeah, I imagine so imagine Moshe being mad at you, man. So it would he's be like, a, it would be real bad. Your brothers just died for messing up the offering. What are you two doing now? Yeah, and they were probably all traumatic. I mean, seeing your brothers die that same day and seeing the family die, seeing what the power of Yod does, um, you might be a little shaky. I mean, maybe uh, who knows why they burned it? Moses would be like calling up the other side of the Levites. Hey, you guys want to be the high priest? Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Um, Eighteen. Behold, the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place. Ye should indeed have eaten it in the holy place, as I commanded. And Aaron said unto Moshe, Behold, this day have they offered their sin offering and their sending smoke offering before Yahuwah, and such things have befallen me. And if I had eaten the sin offering today, should I it have been accepted in the sight of Yahuwah? So, 
Um, and Aaron said, into, i got to reread this again. Yeah, that was the reason. Behold this day have they offered their sin offering and their sinning smoke offering before he, uh, So if he had eaten what was burnt, um, he could have gotten into a lot of trouble as well. So I think he's saying that he's not perfect right now. He's not, he's not in the perfect spot to eat it. Like, like he's unclean. Read like, your version of it. Read 19. And 18 or 19? 19. 19. 19. And Aaron said to Moshe, See, today they have brought their sin offering and their burnt offering before Yahuwah, and these have and these have come upon me. If I had eaten the sin offering today, would it would I have been right in the eyes of Yahuwah? Okay. So what are we saying? What's he saying? So I think he's saying that uh, he didn't eat it because he's not perfect. Because Yehoshua was perfect when he died. So I'm thinking he, he's talking about like, you have to be a perfect person to eat this. You have, yeah, to, like, to, be a a clean, have to be like clean in like a clean state of mind, I think, as well. Uh, yeah, probably be clean, probably unclean so he couldn't eat the meat. Yeah, he's got to be like completely crying inside. His heart has to be destroyed. Yeah, and not being able to cry for someone you love. And you yeah, even him. that. That was, that was a hardcore punishment right there. That was, yeah. that was, that was real hardcore. Some reason Aaron got punished, so he was probably part of whatever happened. Yeah, yeah. I mean, raise your kids up right in the way that you want them to be trained. Okay, twenty. And when Moshe heard that, he was content. So it was what? good. I said it was good in his eyes. Yeah. So what again? So, so he, Moses was like when he oh, he, looked, he understood that he didn't eat it because he wasn't like perfect or something. Okay. All right. Well, that's very interesting. So um, one other thing I did want to go over here, and it is um, in the YouTube studio right here. Um, this one is from Frank Babcock, and this was talking about the Ha Erman and the Ha Tuman, which was from a couple of chapters ago when the the white rocks. And I thought this was worth noting here. Um, our white are a white stone, and the Ha other is black. One means yes, and the Ha other means no. And as they would inquire to Yahuwah, Aaron would reach inside and ha stone that was brought out was the will of Yah was with will of Elohim. So I thought that was very interesting because I, I didn't know that what that Ermin and Tumen was, but it's two rocks. And um, so essentially when they needed an answer from Yah, they would deliver it. And so this other one I want to talk to a little bit about Carla because I, I said I misspoke on her stuff. Um when we were talking about the showers, right? The showers for the priests. And she says they're baths, right? Um, it is a Levitical priestly baths, not showers. I guess they wouldn't have showers back in the day, but baths. And so there were probably baths all over that place to get these guys clean. I don't know where they would have had. I don't know if the, the priests walked away from the temple and from the sacrifices and went home to bath or went somewhere else. Maybe to they might have like dug bath several, house. like almost like large wells or something. You would think they would have like a Levitical bath spot or something that they would have clean clothes, their stuff, and you could go and you could, you could, you know, derobe and do all your stuff. So anyway, that is the bottom of this. And um, I want to thank everybody very, very much for spending this time with us. We appreciate your time. It is a preparation day. We pray that your Shabbat is blessed. We pray that you guys have a wonderful day today. For those who are not keeping Shabbat, I would strongly, strongly recommend it. It is a wonderful time of rest. It is a wonderful time of peace. And um, you will feel better than you've ever felt before when you start keeping the Shabbat. Gentlemen. All right. Um, yeah, if this is the first time you've ever heard from this channel and you're not keeping Shabbat, I strongly suggest you give it your all this weekend. And try your best to keep Shabbat. Just start beginning the cycle of keeping the Shabbat. Right today, you should cook all your meals, do everything you have to do today so you don't have to work tomorrow, and try to take as much of time off as you can tomorrow. Yeah, and if you are not in, like if, if Sabbath keeping is not in your, uh, what you've been doing, it does take a little bit to get into gear. Most of us have been shopping on Saturdays. Most of us did everything on Saturday. Saturdays was the day off. Sunday was the day everybody goes. The day of Sol Victus was the day of uh, the, what they, you know, Sunday worshiping. And, and that is incorrect, according to the Bible. The fourth commandment of, the, of 20, of the Exodus 20, is that we need to keep the Sabbath. And it's, it's literally in the Bible hundreds of times about keeping the Sabbath. It is literally hundreds of times. Um, maybe more than that. Uh, you would have to look and we have to do a count, but it's, I, I stopped about 80 or something like that one time I was looking. So it is in there a tremendous amount of time. So uh, much love, everybody. Anyone else have right. anything else? Uh, Shabbat Shalom. And read your Bibles. Stay yep. in prayer. Um, stay in have prayer. A, have, yeah. a good, uh, have a good day. Yeah, have a good day. All right, Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, shalom everyone. Goodbye.